In this video, we're going to do a review from algebra about exponential functions and their properties. So let's start with the properties of just exponents themselves. So if we have a positive number b and the numbers u and v are real numbers, uh, so any real numbers, any kind of real numbers, then we know that these properties are true, that if you take uh, the product of the power, so b to the u times b to the power of v, I can just write that as a single power with b as the base and the exponent as u plus v. So we have kind of a product rule. There's also a quotient rule. If I take the quotient of two powers that have the same base, I can write that as a single power, but I need to subtract the exponents. So that would be a quotient rule. And there's actually kind of a power rule here too. If I take a power b to the u and raise that to the power of v, I can write that as just b raised to the power of u times v. So a power raised to a power, that's the same as multiplying the exponents together there. Now, if I just use these properties, I can make sense of, for example, b to the power of zero, because zero is the same as a number minus itself. So I could say u minus u. But if I take this b to the power of u minus u and apply the quotient rule here, I'll get b to the u over b to the u. Well, that's just a number divided by itself. And in fact, it's a positive number because we said b is a positive number, our base is positive. And so a number divided by itself is going to give me one. And from that, I can conclude that b to the power of zero equals one. I can also make sense of negative exponents uh, if I have b raised to the power of negative u, that's the same. Well, negative u is the same as 0 minus u. So now I'll apply the quotient rule. We'll have b to the 0 over u. But we just saw that b to the 0 is 1. So that's 1 over b to the power of u. So in other words, b raised to the power of negative u is the same as 1 over b to the u. Or you could also think of this as 1 over b to the negative u is b to the power of positive u. So sometimes you visualize this by saying, if I move this term across the division bar, the exponent changes sign. So if I take b to the u and move it above the division bar, it becomes b to the minus u. If I take b to the minus u and I think of it moving over the division bar, it becomes b to the power of u, positive u. All right, what's the connection between exponents and radicals? Well, radical, so the vth root of b is the same as b over 1, b raised to the power of 1 over b. And so if I have a fraction exponent u over v, that would be the same as taking b to the power of 1 over v and then raising that to the power of u. Notice that I'm just using this product rule over here to write that out. And so that would be the vth root of b raised to the power of u. I could have also written that as b to the power of u raised to the power of 1 over v, which means that the order in which I do the power and the root doesn't matter. I would have b to the power of u and then take the vth root of that. So what about irrational exponents? So we're getting a little bit beyond algebra here. Um, but I think it's important. We don't really uh, talk about it when we first learn about exponential functions, but it is a true statement. We know very well what it means for take five to the power of three 
five to the power of negative two, and in fact, five raised to the power of two fifths. We could define those, we could actually calculate them, uh, you know, get decimal approximations for what they, what they represent. But what if I have five raised to the power of radical two? Well, if I had a fractional exponent, I would know what it is. So we can find a sequence of decimal approximations which approach the exact value of radical two. Now remember, it's impossible to write down the exact value of radical two as a decimal. The decimal representation goes on forever and it never repeats. But still, I could say, well, look, I could write that correct to one decimal place or two decimal, I'm sorry, uh, to one figure, to two figures, three figures, four figures, five figures, six figures, and really so on. I could just keep adding one more correct uh, number to my decimal approximation, and I'll get a sequence of numbers that are all going to, uh, in the end, in the limit, they'll approximate, or not approximate, they will equal in the limit the exact value of radical two. Now, each one of these are rational numbers. I could write it as a fraction, and then I would have a definition of what it means to have a fractional exponent. So all of these, if I took five raised to you know, 1.4142, I know what that means. And so for all of these, I have a definition for that. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, since the limit of this sequence is radical two, I'm going to define five to the radical two as the limit as n goes to infinity of the decimal approximations of radical two. So now with that, we can formally say that if I have a function f of x equals b to the power of x, where b is positive, and we're gonna leave out one as a base because one raised to any power is one. And we really wanna make this a one-to-one -one function. So in order to make it a one-to-one -one function, our base cannot be one. We also wanna make it uh, have a positive base so that the domain will be all real numbers. You can use any real number as an exponent for a positive base. The range then is all positive numbers. If you have a positive base and no matter what power you use, it's never going to be zero and it's definitely never going to be negative. It does get arbitrarily close to zero. So you can choose x so that b to the power of x is as close to zero as you want, but it will never reach zero. Uh, we do know the uh, y-intercept is zero comma one, and there is no x-intercept. Of course, there's no x-intercept because the range is all positive numbers, so it can never cross the x-axis. But it crosses the y-axis at zero comma one because we know that b raised to the zero equals one. It doesn't have a vertical asymptote. That makes sense because the domain is all real numbers but it does have a horizontal asymptote when y equals zero. And that goes to the, back to the idea that b to the power of x can get arbitrarily close to zero, but it never reaches zero. So if you think about this, that if b is greater than one, uh, as the exponent gets more and more negative, then that power gets closer and closer to zero. If you think about it, b raised to the negative 1,000, that's one over b to the 1,000 power, which is a really small number uh, when b is greater than one. And on the other hand, if I have a number between zero and one, uh, then uh, as x goes to infinity, uh, b to the power of x is going to be zero. And we'll see that with the graphs in just a minute. 
And so exponential functions are one-to-one. -one. They have an inverse. So the graphs of exponential function, we think of it as being this hockey stick shape, right? So here's a hockey stick, and here's the graph of an exponential function, uh, y equals two to the power of x. Now, if the base is bigger than one, and I make the base bigger, the result on the graph is that the steep part of the graph, so the handle of the hockey stick, becomes even steeper, and the flat part gets even flatter. So if I go from 2 to 2.5, you can see that. If I go to 3.2, again, it, the steep part becomes even steeper, or it rises even more quickly, while the flat part is even flatter. Now, if you have a base between 0 and 1, it still has the hockey stick shape. It's just the handle is now pointing off to the left rather than to the right. And in this case, if I take a base which is smaller, so it's, here I go from 1 half to 2 fifths, that's 0 0.5 to 0 0.4, then you can see that I get the steep part getting steeper and the flat part getting flatter. And again, if I chose an even smaller base, which is still positive, I still get a steeper part where this, the graph is steep and a flatter part where the graph is flat. Uh, the number e is going to play an important role in the entire course. But for now, uh, we're not even going to define it. We're just going to say it's an irrational number, which means I can't write down its exact value as a decimal. It has the approximate value of 2.718. 281828. Um, if I use that as my base, this f of x, which is e to the power of x, is sometimes called the uh, natural exponential function. And it's called the natural exponential function because in one way or another, it appears in mathematical models for many natural phenomena, such as uh, population growth, uh, radioactive decay, and the spread of disease. Now we've just come out of, and we're not entirely out of uh, our COVID experience. And you can see when you have this hockey stick shape here, what does this say? It says that um, if you don't have very many people infected, then you're on the flat part of this curve. And so it's not growing very fast. On the other hand, if you have a lot of people infected, you're on the steep part of the curve, and then the uh, change in the infections becomes very, very steep. And in fact, if you look back uh, through the statistics of infections in various locations around the world, you'll see that at some times the infection rate was growing very slow, and then it picked up very fast. And fortunately then, it plateaued and then it went down very quickly as well. So uh, you can see that um, in the end, the number E would play a role in those models. So that's kind of our review of the algebraic properties of these functions. Uh, let's see in the next video what we can do with some calculus with these videos.